Hi, Scripties. Welcome to season two, episode eight of Scripts and Screens. I'm your host, Imani Nicole. And I'm Ashana Robinson. Okay, Ashana, what is the latest in TV and film this week? Yes, ma'am. So Travis Kelsey is in talks mm. of starring in an action comedy titled Loose Cannons from Lionsgate. This film is being produced by John Wick director Chad Stahelski. Now, if you guys don't know Travis Kelsey, he is a football player, um, very attractive young man, and he is currently dating Taylor Swift. Um, the la- last week we discussed how all of these people from other industries are moving into the acting world, specifically Jack Harlow, who was in our the last movie we reviewed, Instigators. But would you like to see Travis Kelsey on your big screen? Yeah, I would not mind seeing him. He's definitely attractive. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm interested to see who his character will be. I feel right. like John Cena, The Rock, Terry Crews, those are just a few of athletes who have transitioned into the acting world and have succeeded Mm -hmm. um and i do enjoy seeing them on my screen so we'll see what trav does how do you feel about it i told you last week i prefer my man of a darker hue but mr kelsey (laughs) i love to see him on my screen i know he joined his boo taylor swift on stage for a performance i know it was at least one but i don't know if he did multiple so i'm interested to see him actually Mm -hmm. i guess we will soon mr kelsey All right, so moving into our recommendation this week, The Summer I Turned Pretty, which was a TV series. And um, the description is, a girl is caught in a love triangle between two brothers as she deals with her first love and first heartbreak during the perfect summer. The show was recommended by Gabby, who stated the plot as number one, Belly's transformation over the summer. Um, Number two, the evolving relationships between Conrad, Belly, and Jeremiah. Number three, the impact of Susanna's illness illness on all of the characters. And number four, the final fact of Conrad always loved Belly, but expressed it entirely too late. Um, as for me, the show started off so corny. I'm sorry. But by the end of episode seven, I was crying. So. Yeah, when I watched it the first time, I was an emotional mess. But the mm-hmm. second time around, it didn't have the same sting. I mean, it was still very sad, but I didn't cry. And we know right. I cry all the time, but I didn't cry. But mm-hmm. I do love, love, love this show. So I was glad she recommended it. And I had no tr- no problem getting through it a second time. Mm-hmm. Um, so since this was your first time watching, I want to know your thoughts. I know when you, like you just stated, you said it was corny when you first started it, but then by the end of it, you were really, you know, sad. So mm-hmm. what was your biggest issue with this season or this I series? Think- I think my biggest issue was the whole Jeremiah storyline. Like, I felt like they literally pulled that from their ass. Like, they could have had the same. If they want to do the love triangle thing, they had the option of using Belly, Conrad, and Cam, the boy she met mm-hmm. in the summer. But I just didn't get that Jeremiah was actually into Belly before the scene. He saw her and his brother Conrad watching the fireworks. Mm-hmm. Like, I never got that he was attracted to her in any way. And then, like, right after that scene, it's like, now he's in love with Belly. Um, as I said, he has a golden retriever personality and he was flirting with literally everyone. He even called himself an equal opportunist because he likes girls and boys. Um, I just, I don't know. I think it would have been more believable if when they did the flashbacks, they would have mm-hmm. shown more of Jeremiah, like, you know, fawning over Barry. Right. Like, there was not one. Her. Not a <laughs> single thing. Even They even showed Conrad, like, with the little thing. Yeah. Like, the infinity on the yeah on the and cakes yeah and then no one wanted to teach her how to dance and he talked about dance so that was like a build up I could see like of years but Jeremy yes. no this literally came out of nowhere and yeah it just it just came out of the blue so that was my definitely my biggest issue yeah that's such an interesting perspective because when I watched initially I didn't give it much thought but like mm-hmm. you're right it did seem out of the blue like it sparked mm-hmm. after he saw them from the back porch door. Mm-hmm. And you bringing up him being an equal opportuni- opportunist just gave me a thought of how Jer could have made more sense in the love triangle. And I think it would have been with Steven. Mm-hmm. Um, I say that because when Steven asked if he ever made out with Shay, he said no, but tried mm-hmm. to give him so much discouraging advice to not pursue her because it seemed like he was making her out to be an escort. Yes. Uh, that might've just been me. I don't know. No. I was very confused. I could have seen that making more sense because she, she was attain she was attainable yet not maintainable mm-hmm. and jer seems motivated by what other people have mm-hmm. no i agree because like the way they were kind of he was trying to discourage him from shayla i definitely thought she was like 
for lack of better words, like, oh, or like passed around. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was, like, it was getting easy peasy lemon squeezy and not yeah. worth that egg. Like, yeah, you don't need that. You don't need that. Um, but speaking of Steven, him and Nicole were my favorites. And I think that Nicole eats belly up. I might be a little biased, but I just thought she was so pretty. I didn't really, wasn't really a fan of the plaits they kept giving her, like when she had her hair. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the plaits. Yeah, they could have done something. And it was just like, it was weird how they just randomly were popping up, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I did love that they were diverse in the casting. Like, I did expect this just to be a bunch of white girls, to be honest. But yeah. Conrad's other love interest, Nicole, was black, which I loved. And then Steven's love interest was also Asian like him. And I really appreciated mm-hmm. those details. Um, Conrad himself like was a textbook definition of what they say an angry black woman is. Mm-hmm. He constantly had an attitude. He was off to <laughs> himself, et cetera. Um, Gabby also described him as moody and complex. But I think all of these attributes are understandable once we realized he was really just dealing with the fact that his mom was dying of cancer. And he was carrying that weight alone. Like, he had no one he could talk to that him right. talk with about that. Yeah, that's so interesting. I do not feel like Nicole eats belly up. I don't know, though. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I feel like they have two completely different looks, but I think they're both very pretty. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if they both walked into the club, I wouldn't be like, oh, Nicole's going to, like, bag them all. And, like, people would choose Nicole <laughs> over belly. But I don't know. Um, but I, I do think she's she's pretty. I think if uh, Nicole wore glasses, people would still see her. They acted like once Belly put them glasses on, it was just, she just disappeared. Because she did not look (laughs) that different. Like, I was so confused. They act like she had undergone some type of plastic surgery. The way their jaw just dropped when she walked in. Yeah, it was a bit much. She literally looked the same. Except without the glasses. So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, they could have did yeah. better with that. I don't know. Maybe gave her some pimples. I don't know. Made it make it make yeah, more of a worse. sense. She didn't look make her off. hair short. I don't know. Like do something because I do yeah, feel like you do have that kind of glow up from middle school to high school. <laughs> and we just didn't really see that with Belly. Like getting contacts is not a glow up. You know what at I mean? All. Like, at yeah, all. they gave her braces and glasses. And like, I feel like everybody had that. So I don't, I was, I agree right. with you. It was not a ju- Jurassic transformation. Right. Um, but when you had said the thing about Conrad, I never thought about that, about how he gives angry black woman energy, but mm-hmm. I can see why you say that. Um, to me, he was just your typical man, though. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going through a lot, and I can't commit, but I'm going to play with your mind and confuse you, and I'm mm-hmm. going to be hot and cold with you. And I feel like sometimes people choose to play the hero role, and to me, like, not the first season, the first time I watched it, but the second time that I watched it, I feel like Conrad wanted to be the hero so bad. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I was completely team him when I first saw the series. But this second time around, he just annoyed me. Like, you're moping around. Mm -hmm. You won't tell anybody what's wrong with you. And I feel like he could have shared, at least shared with, at the minimum, his brother, Jer. Right. Um, And I feel like it's just sad because Jer's first instinct when he found out the news about their mom being sick was to tell Conrad. Like, after he sat with it for a little bit, his first instinct was to tell Conrad. Mm -hmm. And Conrad clearly was just never going to tell Jer. Um, and I just feel like, so I understand completely why Jared was pissed. They didn't tell him. And I just feel like people aren't mind readers. And for me, the quiet treatment and the extreme behavior, like him quitting football, I feel like just drew more attention to whatever was going on. Like, if you want to be low key about it, you wouldn't be so out loud with your emotions. And Mm -hmm. I feel like he was, um, and I feel like it just... It just, I don't know. Conrad was the villain in this series in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my favorite would have to be Laurel. I think she never got enough credit for the way she is literally the glue for everyone and completely, and I completely understood what her husband meant when he said there was always three people in this marriage when he Mm -hmm. was referring to, um, is it Susanna? Susanna? Susanna. Susanna. Mm -hmm. When he told her that he ate her up with that line, I was like, he really did. He really did. No, literally, he really did. It just hit me that this is a theme between two of the things we're discussing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I brought it back up in Bikers, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, Um, but yeah, Gabby, the practical and protective were the words that Gabby used to describe Laurel, which I definitely agree. Um, And it's crazy because Conrad actually was getting ready to open up to Laurel, but then she started to talk over him about his ex-girlfriend, Aubrey. Did you keep that? Didn't. Yeah, so like she, when Susanna sent, she's like, you go talk to him. He opens up. So she sits down and she's like, you know, talking to him. And he starts to say something. And then she cuts him off. And it's like, I was young once and having your heart broken. 
And then that's when he was like, yeah, Aubrey. But he really was mm-hmm. able to open up to her. And she, she I do remember off. that scene, but I never put the correlation together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was really... And then, you know, I have the captions on. So it, it showed where he had started a sentence and then she jumped in. <laughs> and then they had that little hyphen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, and now that I think about it, he probably broke up with Aubrey for the same reason he was acting strange to everyone around him. I didn't yes. Know, later until I started thinking about it. Um, but the last episode where they were literally begging their mom to do trials with cancer had me in tears because I do get both sides. As you know, and you listeners probably may know, I spent a lot of time in the hospital this year. And at one point, mm-hmm. I just literally wanted to go home and go to sleep. Like, just stop everything and just go get in my bed. Like, you get tired of, like, the scans and the treatment and the poking. And you just kind of want to just sleep and it's so funny it's because when you when you're that sick and you act normal mm-hmm. it's almost like you're acting suicidal if that makes sense like i just mm-hmm. want to they're bed. expecting you to be right. oh right. like something's wrong because she should not be this calm right. ah okay so it's like i just want to go to sleep and any other person that wants to go to sleep they can go to sleep but no you right. can't go to sleep because you got to stay here and if you don't yeah so like yeah she's detaching from life Right. Mm, so, so that's crazy. Like, yeah. Well, like, my mom literally like, one time my mom was crying like the nurses were begging me to change my mind. I'm like, no, please, like just let me go. I'll come back tomorrow. Just let me go to home tonight. But you're like a sleepy girl. Like I, I think we both love a nap. So like I, 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 I would have never thought that, but I guess because they don't know you, they're like, oh my god, red flag. But like yeah. I would not look at that like that. But that is so crazy, and I can see that though because I think people pre- think people should present how their disease, like, you know, if you're sick, you should come off sick. Like if you're not acting sick, then are you really sick or something mm-hmm. must be wrong because you should not be okay with this. Right. Right. Mm. So yeah, it, it was just a lot, but I ended up passing out. So they had to keep me anyway. So. Oh God. Oh, <laughs> it's, have funny mercy. Now. it's funny now. But it's I know time, you had you know, your mama in shambles, Lord. Yeah, yeah she was in shambles. But, like, I definitely get where Suzanne is coming from because, like, it's just, you just see a tire with this time. Yeah. And a lot of people, like, it was a debate I had to have with Vlad, you know, we were dating and he's like, mm-hmm. well, where people care about you. And I'm like, but at the end of the day, I'm the only person, like, Susanna, she's the only person getting treated. Yes. She's the only person after actually going through it. Yes, you're adjacent to it because your feelings are attached, but she's literally doing this by herself, essentially. She can have the support, but it's only her. She's the only one getting her blood drawn. She's the only one getting tested, losing her hair, losing whatever. So I get it. But then on the other end, I would hate if my mom decided, like, you know, she was going to indirectly, you know, voluntarily leave us. Like, I'm not doing this no more. Like, I know I'm, mm-hmm. not, but I'm not doing this no more. So I can see both sides. I definitely yeah. can see both sides. Mm. Yeah, no, I could definitely see both sides. And I definitely think you have literally been through the ringer this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love how you are not you are not a Conrad to me um, about the situation. I feel like you still try your best to be there for everyone. You're not moping around all this negative mm-hmm. energy. Um, mm-hmm. And you still pursue like the things you love. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like her not wanting to do the trial is respectable because she already went through it once. Mm-hmm. That's why I think transparency is so important in family dynamics. Like I get not wanting to do it a second round, but I think her kids would have understood that too if they knew everything she went through prior. But like Mm -hmm. this whole keeping your kids in the dark, like I just don't think it works. Right. Um, I just feel like, and that's, I feel like that's such an old fashioned way of parenting is sheltering and keeping your kids from the world, which Mm -hmm. we all do the very best we can at the end of the day in regards to parenting. But Mm -hmm. I feel like even at my big adult age, I wish my parents were transparent um, with me and my sister about things before them being forced to due due to circumstance Mm -hmm. especially because like a lot of times at the end of the day it could be something as small as like oh i can't get this but i'm not understanding that like oh my mom had lost her job so Mm -hmm. i'm like real confused but if you would have told me like look we're on a one parent income household right now like right we're gonna have to tone it back you can't get a gift every week anymore (laughs) i would have i feel like i would have understood that you know what i mean like i would have but like instead of like just trying to shield it and then you got an attitude with me because i'm just doing what a normal you know, person does or wants and is getting mad because I can't get something. I feel like there's a lot of chances for education with transparency. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like um, secrets only create anxiety amongst the ones you love. And Mm -hmm. I just feel like you can, it's something that can be eliminated and you don't know how someone's going to respond. I think a lot of times people predict how people are going to respond, predict how they feel about things, but it's their own like kind of 
their take on it. It's not the actual person's take because you didn't even give that person the opportunity to have a take. Yeah. And I definitely call that playing God. Like, at least mm-hmm. give me the facts and let me make the decision. You're playing God right. when you're trying to control the narrative. Yes. Uh, you withholding information. So, yeah. But um, especially with Susanna Dine, like, that's not something you keep from your kids to the very last minute. Like, I feel like Literally. they would want to know more so so they could spend more to time. prepare her. Right. And I'm curious to know when she thought would actually be a good time. Like, when it, is the best time to tell her? Right, before, right before they go on their first day of school, which doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense. And, okay, let me ask you a question. So, okay. What was supposed to be the ages of these boys? Because they kept talking to Conrad like he was so much older than the rest of the kids. Like, you're the oldest. You're I to be felt older. like Conrad was a year older. Right. If not at max two years older, but I, I got the feeling just like a year older. Like, I right. don't know. Like, they, they were juniors and he was a senior, maybe. Okay. okay. That's the vibe I got. Gotcha. Because I was like, all right, Steven is always, they keep bringing up Princeton. So Steven act like he going into his senior year, but Conrad clearly is older. So maybe yeah. Steven was just starting early. Like maybe it was just senior, mm-hmm. junior, and then I guess Belly was a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Now, okay. Susanna, I feel mm-hmm. like she influenced the whole love triangle with Belly and her two sons. And I think it all kind of started with that statement that stayed in Belly's mind where she was saying, you were made for one of my boys. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she was pushing both on Belly and then also pushing both boys on Belly. Like, how did you feel about this? Did you find it weird? Yeah, it was very weird. Absolutely. This whole situation was weird to me. Even when, like, I remember them saying things, I can't remember if it was Laurel or Susanna, but like, Conrad is Belly's knight in Charming's armor. Laurel said that. Okay, yeah. And then Conrad is Belly's son. She's something else about stars going away. I'm like, girl, this is not a Shakespeare play. This is real life. And this is your daughter's emotions. Like, I don't know. It's almost like they thought it was cute. But like, yeah, it's like her little, little, yeah. They were little, but like, no, now they are uh, getting to be adults. This is some real stuff. Like, yeah. My little sixth grade crush or my little fifth grade crush is not the same as my 11th grade crush like a thousand percent the hormones are rushing and they're it's a completely different hurt and pain that you experience in high school than you do in middle school and then just like having my daughter like around these boys in their at that teenage years with the hormones like they out in the water and they alone like right my parents would have eyes on us ain't no hanging around keep that door open Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> they was just like, oh, they've, been, they've grown up together. They've grown up together. They right. don't look at her like that. And I'm like, but they don't look at her like that, but you want them to look at her like that. And you're right. kind of, like, it was just, it was just too Yeah, stupid. it was a whole lot. And the whole, mm-hmm. the, the, all the midnight texts, they meet me outside. Like, why were you, why was it so, and then her even getting up early to go meet Cam, not even letting nobody know. Like, I just, I don't know, the freedoms were real crazy. Like, yes, this boy that they, I, she just met, like, she just met. Yeah, no, Mm-mm. never. So moving to Belly, um, mm-hmm. I feel like I definitely resonated with Belly when she felt like guys talked to her to get to Taylor, her best friend. Mm-hmm. And I also felt like I also could resonate with her when she described Taylor as a hurricane and she always feels like the supporting character. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt that too, because I've had friendships where like, my best friend was like probably the it girl and everybody wanted to like be with her. So I would I could like see how people would be besties with me to get to her or like just be cool with me mm. and try to use me as the like the, oh, can you talk to, you know, Emma for me, whatever. And then I've oh, also Emma. had friends. Yes, Emma. Emma. The, the, they loved Emma. Emma really? was that girl. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I see another picture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. She looks so good now. She's a mom. She looks so good. Um, and then I also understood the hurricane part because I've had friendships where like that friend demands the attention of the room and like, I don't really care for all that. So like, Mm -hmm. I understood her when she was like, she's a hurricane. Like she's a lot. Like when you're around her, it's like, you're the supporting person. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just was wondering, like, did you have that a similar experience in high school and like with your friendships or was it opposite for you? You know, I feel like our high school experiences were so different. Like, the more we talk, I'm like, we just, it was just really different. I did not have any friends like this. Um, There probably were girls like this on my cheer squad, but it was never anybody who, like, I was close with. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would have been able to deal with it. Like, I don't like people that do too much. Yeah. you know, if you're naturally funny and, you know, you naturally, you know, that's cool. Right. 
if you feel like you gotta always like mm -mm, get away from me (laughs) (laughs) so i feel like the one the girls that men are really attracted to seriously they don't have to do all that like i agree i agree yeah um Oh, never mind. It made me think of some a mutual person we know. I'm over here thinking back to our, our college days. Yes. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me a few. Anyway. Um, but I had I did have hope for Taylor. Okay. After the first FaceTime call, I was like, okay, Taylor is gonna be who really helps to bring Bentley out of her shell. But then when I saw how she actually was, I was like, uh-uh. But and I think that's another reason why I really like Nicole because Taylor was clearly intimidated by Nicole and Nicole wasn't really even doing anything. Like Nicole yeah. was just there being nice and Taylor was just shook. Yes and no though. Like I I Taylor bothered me sometimes, but like I just felt like she was human and I do feel like when it really came down to it, when she was called out on her stuff, like she felt bad. She right. and she was yeah. always mm-hmm. really there for Belly. But when Nicole read a text message and her first instinct was to take their clothes. I thought that was so corny. I thought that was so corny. I felt like, I felt like that was such, oh, the man, like chase the man energy. And I feel like a lot of women do that. Like you're mad at me, but you should really be mad at Conrad. So you shouldn't even be taking my clothes and leaving me deserted on the beach with no clothes. That was so goofy. That was so goofy. I might be goofy then because, you know, I think what I think it was the principle because Nicole asked Belly, like she was asking her, like, you know, I'm helping you with Debbie time. Like, so what's, I thought you had something with Conrad. Like, what's up with Conrad? And Belly's like, oh, no, he's just like my brother. Like, he, she's constantly saying, like, no, no, no. And you're in my face. You know I like this man. I'm asking about this man. And you're trying to deal with this man, too. But like, you think that that's her business? Like, I don't even know you. Like, why do I need to tell you? Like, even though it's the big sis, little sis, like, I don't feel like, but so do you really feel like Nicole genuinely want to be friends with her? I feel like Nicole was bringing her around to try to get information out of her. And my whole thing is like, why wow. haven't you asked Comrade? You're so concerned if you like Comrade. Have you ever asked Comrade if he likes Belly? No, you haven't. So I don't mm-hmm. know. Nicole rubbed me wrong. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I just, if I was interested, if me and you were getting to know each other and we both like the same boy. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could keep being in your face. Like, you know, being fake with you, like trying to get close with you, being at your house. On but your I boat. think it was a mix of things, though. I think because Belly never thought that Conrad was really into her. Like he gave such mixed things that mm-hmm. she felt like it was like a a crush that she would never, like a guy she could never get. So it's mm-hmm. like, I'm not about to like make I it seem like it's a thing. Because they didn't technically have a thing. You know what I mean? Like it right. was all very like, I don't know. And like, even when, um, Conrad asked Belly to go to the dance and then the mom was like, oh, did you ask her yet? Like, I don't know. Like, I felt like neither one of them really was like pursuing the other. So it was kind of mm-hmm. like, there wasn't like a definitive line of like, okay, do do we, have we had a conversation about do we like each other? So I feel like True. if I'm still figuring things out, how can you expect me to be real with you when I don't even know myself? Does that I make sense? I can see that too. I can see that too. You know? I think, I think maybe... Of course, Nicole doesn't see all of that too. She sees like yeah. okay, this, this this face bitch is on my boat, drinking my uh, my rose with my friends. When, yeah. yeah, that's a probably. I, I feel like that's probably where she went with it. Like, yeah, I've been trying to be nice to this girl. She had no friends. Like, I'm bringing her in my yeah, store. and she don't hear. Like, we're literally ha- partying, having fun, and this yeah. whole time she's she's been got, you know with this boy. So she yeah. probably viewed it as yeah. a big fake. I could see that. I just, I don't know. I just feel like women always just have so much energy for the girl and not the man. Like, know, even when she... Nicole did pull up on Conrad, though. No, but I didn't even like the way she did it. Like, when she pulled up to him and then, like, Conrad literally answered her question and was like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, mm-hmm. it didn't, didn't say, like, oh, I didn't mean that. Like, no, I don't want to take her. It was He was like, my mom did ask me, which is true. But he even still didn't try to retract that, like, yeah. he wanted to take her. And then Nicole wanted to be like, I have a man at Oxford that wants me. Like, girl, like, I don't yeah. understand why women want men that don't want them to want them so bad. Like, that should be your clear cut. Like, you should be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you answered the question for me. Like, I'm out. She was like, I have a man from Oxford that wants me. And she literally was mm-hmm. quiet, hoping that that was going to make Comrade be like, oh, no, no, mm-hmm. no, I'm so sorry. And he didn't. And I just, I don't know, I, wasn't, I didn't like it. I'm like, I Nicole, think- you were too cute to be, like, giving pick-me right. energy. I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from. I can't act like I haven't done it before. Like, I've definitely <laughs> wanted, like, I want you to still, even if I'm ending it with you, I want you to still want me. I want you to hurt. I want you to feel yeah. like you lost something. So, yeah. I, mean, I get it. It's not the best quality to have. 
Yeah, but I it's normal it, human reaction. Yeah, I think. Because it's like, all right, clearly you don't really want the guy in Oxford because you would be with the guy in Oxford. You clearly right. want me because you would have been with him. So Yeah. But I just feel like I, I get that it's a total human reaction, but when has that ever worked? You know what I mean? Like, Never. I just feel like men are not dumb. They know men are in your DMs. They know, like, mm-hmm. let's be real. Men go for anything and everything. So, like, a man has to know you're wanted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I want us women to stop doing that. Like, yeah. I'm not even about to tell you. You just sit back and watch. Mm-hmm. Like, and I just, I feel like she thought that, like, she ate with that. And, like, at the end of the day, Conrad was still not changed or phased. It right. was more like, it's and I think that, like, like, he's kind of a coward, though, because it's like, I do agree with Nicole. Like, if you knew, then you should have just had that same energy with me. Like, even when she was like, I want to go to this concert. But I felt like Nicole already knew the answer before she was doing all that. Because it's like, you're you're having to initiate all these things. This man is not making, like, genuine plays with you. You want to go to a concert. You want to do these things. You're asking him to go. He's just agreeing to go along with it. Mm-hmm. So Again, that's one. I feel like I've I've been in that boat. I've been in that boat. I've been in that boat for like one ask. Like I'll put forth the energy one time, and then when I see mm-hmm. like you acting weird about it, like I'm not asking you to do anything oh, ever have, again. Okay, we got to think about us. Young. She's still young. Yes, in high school, I, like I'm telling you, I was. I, I'm right, saying I'm, I'm only college. saying it because it comes from okay, college too. College and high school, I think only because it came from like a petty standpoint. Like here's my thing. I feel like the things that you're saying you would do to a, a man, I would do them, but not to the man. Like I would do them to y'all. I'm not ever gonna do it to the man and make him think that I'm doing that. Does that make sense? Like you remember that time when we were in the cafeteria and I asked, Does such and such look better than me? I never asked him that. I only asked y'all that. Like in the cafeteria. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Like, how could you forget that? You, you, is it coming back to you now? Yes. That girl looked crazy. I heard. I heard. And that's why, like, I, I mean, feel like for me, like, I just perfect. would do those okay. things, but not to the man. Like, I would do them to y'all, not okay, to the man. Like, you're never gonna know. Let me make sure I'm thinking of the right girl. Does she kind of have like a Miss Piggy face? Yes. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, and I, do you remember that time in the cafe? I was like, does she look yeah. better than me, y'all? You should have never asked us that. It, it's, no. <laughs> but, like, that's my thing, though. I would never ask him that, though. Like, I would never be like, so, like, is it just, like, does she, like, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I just, like, I don't know. I just, Nicole gave me, I guess, like, confident energy but then insecure energy at the same time mm-hmm. like I, like i said i loved the delivery she gave comrade up until that very end it just it just mm-hmm. made everything like because i liked how she was mm-hmm. direct with him but then that, it, it's like damn you had him it was like mic drop then you're like wanting him to want i don't know like I, yeah and i think that was a pain too, like and i can see this too like Every time she was thinking, like, I don't think Conrad really likes me. And then he'll come around and do just enough to give her a little. Yeah, yep, that's, that's true. That's how they do That is so true. Every time. Like, even when they came to a little dance thing and she was helping Belly out. And he's clearly waving at Belly. But she thinks he's waving at him. That was enough to give her a little hope. Because she had lost some hope. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, there's Conrad. He came by to see me. Yeah. So... But, yeah, that's true. It was very confusing. And that's why that's why I said Conrad is the villain, bro. Like, I'm not yes. falling for his bullshit. Like, yeah, he's, he's the villain. He knew what he everything. was doing. Because I don't even think he knew if he really wanted Belly. I don't think he even knew if he really wanted Nicole. Like, he was very confused. So I have a little bit of empathy of, like, you don't know. So you can't really voice what you don't know. But it's right. also, like, but you know what you're doing to these two women and how you're confusing them. Right. And that's where you're guilty at. You're not guilty for not knowing who you want or how you feel. But you're guilty for playing with people who think that they're only talk like you only have feelings for them. Um, so the scene where Taylor, Belly's best friend, hooks up with her brother Steven, mm-hmm. and it infuriated Belly. She was so upset. Um, it made me think of both of us because we both have a brother mm-hmm. and you have multiple brothers. Would you be mad if one of your friends hooked up with your brother? Or if you didn't mind or did mind, does the context matter? Like whether it was a hookup or whether they like seriously wanted to pursue things with each other? Um, it's funny you ask that because I actually am trying to put one of my friends on with my stepbrother. <laughs> oh, wow. But I think, yes, I think it's like, and for Belly too, I think if they would let me know ahead of time, it would be less weird. Like, I think. But how can you let them know ahead of time? You think Taylor knew ahead of time she wanted the brother? Yeah, I remember she said, I've been in love with your brother this whole time. You didn't hear her say that? She's like, if you thought about anybody but yourself, you know, I've been in love with Steven this whole time. Oh, I missed it. You know, I'm always yeah. missing shit. Yeah. So, and you know, I express interest about your uncle, even though he married. 
and it's not that weird. Like, I'm like, Ivani. So. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, I'm so weak. Even your mom, like your mom was saying me. <laughs> she said something to me about her. You remember that? I think so, but I can't remember um, what she said, but I do remember it. She was like laughing or something. But yeah, how easy it was for me to be like, oh. Yeah, that one day we, he took us to Croker Spot. You ain't, mm-hmm. you just. <laughs> you can take us again if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, he looks older and older by the day. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Imani's uncle, I'm sorry. I'm No disrespect. At all. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe like like as my friend, she yeah. I'm not gonna say her name. We don't know her. Anyway, she was like, you know, he's cute. And I'm like, okay, well yeah, he's actually a decent person because some of my other brothers, I'm sorry y'all, but y'all got some questionable actions sometimes. Right. They're so still I'm growing like, up, they're still maturing. Right. But this one I'm like, okay, you know, I can see it. That'll be cute. Yeah. But I've also had another situation where someone was trying to talk to my brother and it was weird and kind of behind my back and it was a little weird. So I think it's more of the upfrontness. Okay, so that, okay, so now question. So for you saying behind your back, now let's say, okay, so she clearly didn't tell you. Did your brother tell you? Yeah, he told me. Oh, now he know me. Like, I don't play that. Oh, no, he told <gasps> me. No, 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 he told me. <laughs> oh, he told you. He was like, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to get at me. Mm-hmm. I'm weak. Mm-hmm. I feel like for me, I just think because my brother is so much older than us, it would be right. very weird. Yeah. Um, my uncle is too very much older than us. Um, <laughs> but well, I just feel like... Did I say equal opportunist? I'm an equal no, no mm-hmm. literally. you got the Jeremiah mindset over there. Um, I think it's just so... I think I would just find it weird, but like it... They truly wanted to... I just feel like... For me, I feel like the context is like, it's got to be clear, cut, whatever it is. Like, right. if it's going to be y'all just hook up, then y'all both need to realize that if feelings get involved, then I don't have to like try to, oh, you can't come to this family event because my brother's going to be there. Mm-hmm. And then on the serious relationship side of it is like, you guys are going to have to learn to coexist or you're going to have to be okay with losing me as a friend because at the end of the day, like, I'm not picking a friend over my brother. Like, I don't care how close right. we are. Um that's my brother and like y'all knew the risk going into it so it's like even if my brother plays you like at the end of the day i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna stop Mm -hmm. like not my brother like that's just not gonna happen so it's like a lot of risk and i think that my friend would have to just really like sit down there and write all this out and like figure out is it worth it nine times out of ten i feel like because women are not girls girls essentially like Mm -hmm. they would think it's worth the risk which i understand that too because it's like okay what if this is my husband or like the man of my dreams Am I going to pass out on that because of like, you know, like you kind of have to, it's like with eternal spotless, that was, that title is so complex, but the last movie we we reviewed, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, like it's kind of like that last movie that we reviewed where it's like, you'd rather have, you know, loved and lost than never have loved at all. So it's just, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just love is an emotion that we're willing to pretty much do anything for. Mm -hmm. So another relationship or dynamic that I did enjoy was. Conrad and Cleveland's relationship and Cleveland was the author mm-hmm. and he was similar to Laurel. He was the author. Laurel was an author and they met at Laurel's like book signing. Mm-hmm. And this did make me happy because I was glad that Conrad had someone to talk to because it was right. so obvious that he needed to get things off of his chest that were going through his mind. Did you have anyone like this growing up that you could talk to um, when you felt like you couldn't go to your parents? Um, not necessarily growing up, no. Um, now I have a therapist, of course, and I talk mm-hmm. to him about everything. But I do really like, well, let me ask you, did you have a person you could talk to? I would say like, I don't know. I feel like when I was younger, I was just so much more vulnerable and open with my friends. So like they were the ones that like I would Same. tell these things to. Like like yeah. three of my really good girlfriends, I would tell everything to like mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, and that's why I always, like, love Jill down because, like, I would tell Jill the things that, like, I felt like I maybe couldn't tell my parents or if I told my parents they didn't really take it seriously. Like, oh, like, I'm, you know, my feet are huge. And, and Jill would be like, girl, bye. You are damn near six foot. Like, it, you would not look right with size right. eight feet. Right. So, like, it was, you know, I had, you know, friendships in my life where I felt like I could really, you know, be open and honest with and them mm-hmm. not, like, you know, try to use it against me or anything like that. Right. So that's good. I think too, I had more so friends versus like another adult, but like now I do mm-hmm. have my therapist. Um, but I do, I did really like Cleveland and I was confused on them making the point to say that he was bisexual. Bro, I missed that. When did they, he say this? So 
we okay so I think it was at the bookstore in Laurel and Susanna were talking and she was like mm-hmm. I read his memoir about his ex he, oh, um, so he was a man about his ex. yeah and he was like he's a man and she was like oh. he, but he's not gay he's bisexual is that a problem that's what Susanna said to Laurel and she's like no it's not so I'm like, I don't know why I thought that was a hypothetical situation. I know exactly what scene you're talking about. I don't know why she read yeah, she read up something about his mm-hmm. ex. So I'm like, okay. So I was expecting him, again, don't cancel me, but I was expecting him to do bisexual things or things to show that he was... To show bisexual. that versus a monologue. Yeah. Yeah, but they never acted on it. And he was only with Laurel during the season so i don't know why it was actually relevant and i get them trying to be inclusive but jerry barrett was holding it down for the bisexual community yeah he literally was a main character yeah. and they showed him you know interacting with both men and women okay cool so i just was really confused on why that was thrown in there for cleveland because what yeah it didn't it didn't change anything like it didn't yeah i think it's 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 like you brought up earlier where they throw in an idea but it's not executed like with jer and the love triangle there's nothing that gave us any insight but yet they gave us background for conrad like i think that they they could have even had laurel and cleveland have a conversation about their exes they both she was divorced he had wrote the memoir like there was so much room for that it could have been even their prior conversation to hooking up in his car like that could have been what just really brought them together and made them say let's do it so yeah, that's true. That's yeah. They had they threw a lot of things in there randomly. Yep. Um, and I think they were trying to be inclusive. But I think when people want to be inclusive, they actually want you to show what they yeah. go through or do, not just yeah, like all right, not just use keywords, you know? Yeah. Like it's, it's very and again, interesting. they had Gary doing that. So I don't really understand. Yeah, yeah for sure. This was, yeah. <laughs> okay you guys moving on to our second plot and pop pick of this week is the bike riders and this is on peacock um over the course of a decade a midwestern motorcycle club evolves from a gathering place for local outsiders to a sinister gang threatening the original group's way of life how did you feel about this film <laughs> i actually enjoyed this a lot more than i expected um, I probably never would have clicked on it if you hadn't suggested it, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm glad that you did because I'm glad that I watched it. Same with Back to Black. Um, mm-hmm. I love the flow of the movie and the storytelling from the point of view of Kathy. The interview style really kept the movie moving forward. I think it kept it interesting. It kind of had the flashback. It wasn't mm-hmm. anything at all. Like Really well done, really well executed. Yes, I think this was storytelling at its finest. And it definitely made me interested to read the book that inspired this film Mm -hmm. after watching it. I'm going to have to try it. I'm going to have a whole list of stuff I need to read to follow up. No, literally. So, um, I'm not familiar with any of the actors, but I think this was very well casted. And I really did think the costume design was very good, too. So I'm so surprised you say that because t- I didn't like you don't know Tom Hardy. He's huge. He's Venom. Do you know what Venom? Yes, I think maybe I just didn't like. You didn't realize that that was him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Venom. And then before Venom, I watched the movie Legend, which is where I really, which was his breakout role for me, is where, mm-hmm. where I discovered him. And I think he's just so talented. Now Austin Butler is to me new on the scene. I'm sure he's been around for ages. Acting. I think his stuff goes back to Disney Channel days. Yes. Um, but I just know him because he used to date Vanessa Hutchins mm-hmm. and he was dating Vanessa Hutchins from High School Musical when <clears throat> when he got casted to be Elvis. Like she encouraged him to go for the role Elvis, which got like a lot of uh, acclaim. So, but she, they're not together anymore. She's married to a baseball player, pregnant, the whole nine. Um, but I thought the, the acting was phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed everybody. I think everybody did a great job. But Kathy, played by Jodie Comer, she was my favorite. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen her in anything before, but after that performance, I hope to see her on my screen again numerous mm-hmm. times. Who was your favorite? Yes. Um, so, okay, so I do remember seeing an interview with Austin Butler and Vanessa Hudgens after you said this. Um, mm-hmm. I can't remember which show. But yes, they were together at the time when I saw that interview. So I am familiar with him. Um, mm-hmm. As far as Jodie Comer... Again, I haven't seen her in anything, but she yeah. did play that role. And her voice was so annoying. So when people annoy me, I know they're acting well. Like, I yeah. know they're acting well. Because I was so sick of her talking, but I'm like, that's probably exactly how they sound. Like, she's probably killing this accent. I no, just literally. I just, I just can't with it. I can't. 
Um, but actually, Tom Hardy's character, Johnny, was probably my favorite. Like, I don't know. I just, the, like you said, the acting was really good. I yes. liked how, you know, he was the leader at the bike club. He did get on my nerves a little bit when he was kept encouraging um, Benny to drive, I mean, ride when he yes, definitely needed to do. Like, right. Um, but yes, he he was my favorite character. And I just, I really like, I, keep, I know I mentioned costume design, but I loved their jackets. Like how mm, it was well fire. looked, and I'm used to seeing like you know the little fake leather motorcycle yeah. jackets, but it was nice to see the actual real like authentic. This is really the motorcycle jackets that they're out here wearing. Yes, so, for sure. Okay. And because this was so big and based around motorcycles, have you ever been on a motorcycle? And what was that experience like for you? And if you had a partner that wanted to join a motorcycle club, would that be a deal breaker for you? Um, I have not been on a motorcycle. The closest thing I've been really? to is, yeah, the back of a four wheeler. That's <laughs> <laughs> I've been ATVing. That's yeah, but, but, similar. Yeah, that's but, hilarious. No, as far as a motorcycle club, no. Like, I, I need to start thinking like beyond my what I know. Comprehension. Yeah. Even like when I was like watching this, I'm thinking like, oh, my man would never done that or this, but I just could not see anyone that I was interested in being. In a motorcycle. Into motorcycles, yeah. They do have I like feel that, that. that black bike week that they have down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's not completely out of the question, but I think if he like just rode for fun, I had a coworker who dated a guy in a motorcycle club and she used to enjoy like they would just get on the bike and ride. And go, okay. Mm-hmm. But I mean, so I don't think it'd be a deal breaker unless he was really like prioritizing that. Over yeah, me. over like, everything else. He, he can't come to my family reunion because they got a ride to the <laughs> Like, all right, that's, that's doing too much. But I don't mind. <laughs> what about you? Um, I've been on a motorcycle one, never drove one, of course. Mm-hmm. I can barely handle a regular bike. I'm lucky to have right. made it with the Me training too. wheels off. Okay. Like I Me definitely too. still put my feet down the brake if I if it gets too crazy. Girl, I don't um, even get on a bike. <laughs> But I love the breeze um, that you feel when you're on a motorcycle. Like, it just does feel freeing. So I get why people do it. It is exhilarating. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also, on the other hand, have seen some nasty accidents where I'm driving and you see a man literally laying there. And you can tell this was clearly a motorcycle accident. Um, So I think I want to say it would be a deal breaker for me, especially if he didn't get rid of it once we have kids. Because I would hate for something to happen to him while he was on that bike that was preventable. Like you could have been in a whole Toyota Camry, but you decided to be on that Harley Davidson and mm-hmm. now our kids don't have a dad, you know? So exactly. I it's think because most of them were saying that's how they wanted to go. One and down. One and down. Oh my God. I missed that. And that okay. is insane. I would, yeah, if a man ever said that, like, I'm gonna let you go ahead and die by yourself on that bike. Yeah. At the end when they were talking about the, I'm gonna head out that, um, that ran into the car and died. Mm. Was it Carol? I think it was Carol. I don't remember. There were so many names and them doing like the flashback of the guy that became a cop and all right, that yes. stuff. So it was it was during that scene and they was like, yeah, if I, I want to go on a bike, but that's the way I want to die. And I'm like, y'all are insane. No, literally. Um, I felt like the film was filled with so many quotes and one-liners that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And one that really stuck out to me is when the photographer was doing one of his interviews and the guy he was interviewing said, bikes lead to something negative. Obscenity and motorcycles go hand in hand. At least that's what people think. Anyways, and the interviewer says, why? And he says, everybody needs somebody to pick on. Can you think of anybody else? And I felt that because I hate to see a motorcycle group in the left lane on the highway. Or or them to be weaving in and out of traffic. Like, we're all at a standstill. Your ass is in here weaving in and out. Like, I'm sorry, but that pisses me off. And I'm just like, look at this goofy goober on a bike. Mm -hmm. So, um... I do feel like they're the epitome of a menace to society. Um, so I completely understand. I liked that scene because I it made me think of my own personal experience with people mm-hmm. who are on bikes. Were there any quotes or scenes that stuck out to you? Yes. So um, I do agree. When they be weaving in and out of traffic, it drives them crazy. I don't mind them so much riding together, like if they're in that one lane. But like if it's just one single person weaving, like yeah. that, that, that does piss me off too. Yeah. But, um, Kathy, I should have wrote it down, but Kathy, she was talking to the interviewer and she was talking about how Benny like always just says, I'm a go, I'm a go. And sometimes I wish he would just pack up and go without telling me. And I really, mm. I really just felt that. Cause it's like, I feel like it's almost a form of emotional abuse. Like you keep yeah. dangling this thing over Threatening. my head. I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go. And she's like, 
I just wish she just wouldn't tell me and just get up and leave. Like that would be yeah. easier for me to get over just by him leaving versus him threatening me that he's going to leave. And I'm basically, you know, having anxiety. Like, okay, is this the day he actually is really going to leave? Just get up, just go. No, literally. Just go. But yeah, that, that stuck out to me, that quote. Yeah, I get that. That's a, yeah, that was a good one. I agree with that too. Cause like, mm-hmm. stop threatening me. Cause I'll be like, I would have been like, then do it. Mm-hmm. Nobody's keeping you here. The door is right there. Mm-hmm. There's not a, a padlock. Turn it, turn it, twist it. What Fantasia say, if you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Go ahead and be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what I thought about. Like, and, mm-hmm. and Benny was just so impulsive. Like. If a man ever waited outside of your house like Benny, would you consider that crazy or romantic? You know, and again, this is me being my limited view of what the world. I can't even imagine um, that happening because any man I dated would have beat Benny's ass within 15 minutes of him sitting there. Like, no, that was, I, that was so crazy how the man was like, look at him and then go inside. Right. Because like, even when they first pulled up, he's like, where have you been? And she's like, I'm not going back with these people. It would have been. Any man that I've ever dated, it's been a whole more, a lot more conversation than you getting dropped off by this random man and you just walking in the house talking about something. I'm not going back to that party. And I was just so surprised that ben, that Kathy said's boyfriend just left. Like, Biddy intimidated you that much. Married, over which there. was crazy to me. I think they were married. Oh. Because she was, she had made a reference to like two marriages or something. But then she kept so, saying, my, when my boyfriend comes back. He's not going to be happy. Like she said. Oh, yeah, she friend. did say that. I was confused when she, because she did say, like, my marriage is. She said that. Yeah, she said she marriage is. I'm like, John. damn, that man walked out on the marriage over that shit? Like, that yeah. was crazy. She definitely was calling him boyfriend to again. And so I don't know she, if she was. Had another marriage prior to that particular boyfriend. Because she yeah. said she had marriages, multiple marriages. Yeah, she did. But yeah, like, he just, he wasn't even, he literally was just sitting there, but he was. And. If the man just was like, I can't deal with this. I'm like, what is he doing? So he's scared. He ain't said nothing disrespectful. He ain't tried to fight you. He's just being really weird by sitting outside. And it's your house, your woman. You do something about it. He wanted her to do something. She's like, right. what do you want me to do? I told him to leave. Um, but yeah, yeah I think crazy. it was, Benny sitting out there was a bit strange, especially all night long. And especially because they had just met. It wasn't like he, she was a high school sweetheart. He reconnected mm-hmm. with him. He don't know this woman from a can of paint. But I think no, she literally. let it slide because she was so attracted to him. Yes. I, yeah, I found it so weird. Now, if he was already my man and he did that, definitely romantic. Uh-huh. Because it shows me you really sorry because there's uh-huh. no way I would ever do that. So right. when Johnny... um, And then also, did you see how they got married after five weeks? Would you get married after five weeks? I don't know. I don't, I don't think I could do five weeks. I mean, I always tell people that like love, you can, you can find out. We're not getting married after five weeks. We can maybe get engaged after five weeks, but we're not getting married. Yeah, that's that's too much. That's yeah, that's a little too, it's a little too soon. A little mm-hmm. too soon. Um, but when Johnny realized that he couldn't control the new age, you know, members, um, he told Benny he couldn't lead anymore. I was shocked that Benny turned him down. Were you? Mm-hmm. Very shocked. Um, yeah. Um, I just knew that's what Johnny wanted deep in his heart. But I mean, sorry, what Benny wanted deep in his heart. But mm-hmm. honestly, I feel like Benny could not commit. Like, he knew for the the only thing he could be with for the rest of his life was his bike. And, like, even if he chose to leave his whole life behind, as he did, we saw him, Mm -hmm. he could always take his bike with him. So, like, he loved Kathy, but, you know, he always was starting to go because he knew if he left, he could just bring the bike. He really really cared about that bike. (laughs) So, yeah. That's so terrible, Mm -hmm. but so true. So, my mouth literally dropped when Johnny died. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew he was going to die, but I didn't think like that. Like I felt it coming because he asked his wife, where are the kids? Mm -hmm. And she kind of was just there, you know, wherever they're at, they're at somebody's house. And then she's over there like, oh, I don't want to leave again tonight. So give me some eggs. He Mm -hmm. knew he won't bring the eggs back. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think I just, it gave the tone that he was going to die. Um, and I thought that it was crazy that when he asked the new kid that challenged him fists or knives and he said knives and then when they get to the parking lot, he shoots him without warning. Mm-hmm. That was crazy to me. But I also think it's so such a fitting representation of the world today. Like things back in the day, I felt like we'll fight about it. Nowadays, you have to worry about getting shot about it. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like this new age is walk a flock, a lot of gun sounds. And it's crazy to me. <laughs> yes. It's crazy to me. But the most ironic thing about this is that he was killed by a member of the Milwaukee chapter when he was hesitant at first about them even becoming a chapter. Remember, that's the first scene we saw where he fought was someone challenged mm-hmm. um, 
from the fact that he denied this his killer the membership into his chapter and the killer just went to the Milwaukee chapter and joined like it was nothing. It got yeah. so big, the communication was gone. Because if it yeah. was so small, he could have called somebody up and like, nah, yeah, this don't is let a little him. Hispanic looking boy named so and so that's gonna come over there. Don't let him in. Right. But again, he had lost it's like he had lost control of it at this mm-hmm. point. And the kid already showed he was sleazy when he was ready to abandon his friends for a spot in the yes. And I think that was his test. If he'd been like, nah, I'm staying with my friends. Like, he probably would have let him he in. Been in. Yep. He was like, yeah, that's fine. They can go. I just want to be in this club. And he's like, no, what kind of piece of shit are you? You can't do that. Right. Um, but like you said, when um, I knew Johnny was going to die, when his wife said, are you coming home? And he like kind of paused. And I was like, it was a simple question on her end, but it was like sinister due to the circumstances. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was definitely some foreshadowing of him not coming yes. home and she not getting the eggs. Right. You're going to have to do You're going to be preparing a lot more than just some eggs right. after that. Right. Um, I feel like the wife had it right when she told Johnny when he was looking for Benny after he disappeared that he would see him before she would. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why she, he did it was because Johnny was dead because he mm-hmm. went to that place first. And then when he found out he was dead, then he was at Kathy's doorstep crying. Right. Um, and I think it just made me think of the summer I turned pretty when Laurel's husband said there's always been three people in this marriage. Mm-hmm. And it made me want to ask you, like, would you be able to deal with your husband's friends want or requests always superseding what you want? And could you be in a marriage where you come second? Nope. <laughs> Hell no. That's it. That's all. Period. Period. Because at that point, why are we together? No, literally. Why? Like, why? Like, it's bad enough. Yeah. You know, some people kind of try to put their mom. Like, I think mm-hmm. I'm willing to deal with the mother. Like, okay, you're doing a little bit more for your mom. She might be single. Yeah. She's really relying on you. Okay. But another man. Go be with that man. <laughs> Go be with him. No, for real. I don't think I could either. I mean, I've had a relationship in the past where I didn't feel like my, I didn't feel like my partner put other like his friends before me, but I just feel like he didn't really speak up when it came to them. Like I felt mm-hmm. like his friends would put him in situations where it's like, why did you even allow them to do that? Right. And it wouldn't make sense to me. So then I would be frustrated with him. And then ultimately I'm like, Oh, I don't feel like your friends have your best interests at heart. So like, mm-hmm. I didn't really like them. Um, so I could understand why Kathy was frustrated with Johnny, but like there still was love there because those are his really good friends. But like, she was mm-hmm. just so frustrated. Cause it's like, you could put it into this because he respects you. If you just right. said it, then we could be over this. Right. Um, but I would never give the ultimatum like how Kathy did. I just felt like she, that was a losing battle. I don't know if she just wanted to hear it out loud. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was a, I don't know why she gave the ultimatum because she already knew what the choice was going to be. Right. He said, what do you think this was? He literally said that to her. Like, what do you think this was going to be? No, literally, which is crazy to me after you asked me to marry you. Right. You, stood, you sat in my house for 24 hours harassing me. Literally. my boyfriend out. <laughs> I could have still been in that marriage. Right. Okay, so moving on. Um, the last one is The Union from Netflix. Mike, a down-to-earth construction worker, is thrust into the world of super spies and secret agents when his high school sweetheart, Roxanne, recruits him on a high-stakes U.S. intelligence mission. This movie had a 37% on Rotten Tomatoes and 5.5 on IMDb. In the name? This movie was <laughs> so bad. Like Hallie and Mark, I expected so much better from y'all. They had zero mm-hmm. on-screen chemistry, first off. Mark Wahlberg produced this, and I know he lost so much money from this film because once mm-hmm. again, it was, was it in the UK? Yes, part of it yeah. was. Yeah, so y'all didn't even film this in the US. Y'all should have mm-hmm. filmed it. Y'all should have found out a way to make it in whichever one of y'all's cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. Um, I could have done without this film ever being made. I hate to say that, but um, this would have been, I feel like this was would have been good for a commercial. I don't know what they would have been selling, <laughs> but 90 seconds might have been even too long for this duo to be on my screen. Um, and then Hallie also announced on the Jimmy Fallon show that uh, it was the 20th anniversary for Catwoman. And she said that she would, and he asked her, would you ever play the character again, Catwoman? And she was like, only if I could direct it. Mm-hmm. Well, this performance does not have me excited for a sequel if they ever decide to pursue it. Um, maybe Tubi would back the film. I don't know who would get behind that financially. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even remember why I specifically didn't like Catwoman, but I just remember it not being good. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel about this film, The Union? And if there was a Catwoman sequel, would you be excited for it? 
I wish I just could, would have counted how many times they mentioned Jersey in the first half of this movie. Like every other line is in Jersey. When I was in Jersey, I'm from Jersey. I'm playing the Jersey <laughs> song. Like I think it was the writing that really just made it bad. Yeah, I'm just like, what in the world? Um, and I could not stay focused. And it's crazy because the movie wasn't slow. It was full of action. So the fact that I just was not, I watched this twice and both times I'm like, why can I not focus on this movie? Yeah, me too. (laughs) I was doing numerous things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I do agree they had no chemistry. I think it would make more sense if they would have said Roxanne was Mike's crush and not his high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Like if she would have came back as his crush and he's like, you know, trying to get to her, it would have made more sense. Yeah, um, for sure. It, they could have even made them somehow related and it would have made more yes. sense to me because it did not seem like Hallie's character had any feelings at all for Marvel's character. Like, at he was kind of get on his end, like, you can see. Yeah, hers. like, he was getting kind of flushed and she had a husband. He was like, why didn't you tell me? And Right. Yeah, she, so yeah. I get that. They did, did you realize they did not kiss one time during this movie? Yes, and I heard that they talked about that. Like that was a running thing. Like before I even saw it, I saw like an article about Halle Berry and Mark don't even kiss at all during the film. They don't kiss at all. So how am I supposed to expect y'all was in love? In the way they kept going yeah. back, like talking about eighth grade and the janitor's closet. Like they were together for years, but you could not tell the way this chemistry was in this movie. Yeah, it didn't give at all. It barely gave friends. Barely, barely. And that's, and that's my next point because I feel like she was a villain to me along with her husband, Nate, her ex husband. Mm-hmm. She has absolutely no regard for Mark's life. Like she, she doesn't. Up Twenty five years later to use him, and then she really killed me when the mission didn't go the way she wanted it to go. And she goes, "Maybe I should just send you back to Jersey so you can stay alive." So now you're concerned, right? About my overall well being when I didn't perform like you thought I would or you thought I yeah. should. Yeah, that was a mess. Um. As far as the Catwoman movie goes, I've never seen the first one. I mm. do want to say that when they showed that little app um, on Instagram, I think it was Netflix, they showed her behind the scenes footage of her fighting. Yeah. Um, her ability to do it in one take. I was like, okay, so maybe I'll go watch Catwoman and maybe I'll watch the sequel, but I'm not going to go yeah. out rushing like, okay, I got to see this. But if it's streaming and HBO Max suggested to me, yeah, I'm like, click I'm like, go ahead and click. <laughs> But I think, I really think overall my biggest issue with this movie is it did not give her a personality. I felt like her character had absolutely no personality. They had yeah, they gave her haircut a personality. No, literally. That haircut had personality. That, that haircut but, had more personality than the whole film. Yeah. Like, it just, it just felt very flat. And yeah, I and the husband, he's, he's well known. I can't think of his name right now, but like, he right. added a little, a little spe- pizzazz to the movie. Yeah, but him and, him and Juliet them together yeah like, that, was, that was cool but other than that yeah mm-hmm. this was just this was just not it because i think not they were trying it. to make mark Wahlberg be like plain regular which okay that would work but you gotta have like hallie should have really been a very strong personality character if they were gonna keep mm-hmm. him like this nobody man no, which he's yeah. supposed to be but yeah no she barely smiled like she had no personality no she really didn't she really didn't okay tell them what we're watching next week yes so next week we are watching house of the dragon season one and this is recommended by alex we are also watching the jackpot which is that's on prime right yep it's on prime yes and then um once upon a time in hollywood i think that is also on it's on hulu Hulu. Okay, I'm giving y'all wrong information. Hulu. So, Netflix House of the Dragon. I mean, yes, HBO Max House of the Dragon. The Jackpot Prime. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on Hulu. And y'all know I'll put all of this on, yes. on the page. So, sorry for messing it up, but I, I'll get y'all right later on. Anything yes. else you want to add? No, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until yeah. next time, have a great week, a great day, a great weekend. Bye. Thank you.